never fails. Let a man sit in prison for a handful of years, and all that strength of keeping the voice silent, instead of pointing the finger at others, they're able to hold their composure and take the rap for the very crime they not only committed, they admitted to committing. But I'll tell you what, once you learn exactly how that prison cell feels and the pressure of those that hawk eye around you, the dangerous people in the penitentiary that could just get your door popped for a split second and run in and that's it. It's over. That's right. Chris Watts. He's been pretty quiet in the nature of pointing fingers until here recently. And now Jezebel. His Jezebel. Nicole and Kay is being pointed at. Mayor Hayes, this is Convict's Thoughts, and we spend our time on this channel taking a unique view and perspective while we discuss true crime cases that are horrifically bad, gut feely in nature. But they've got to be discussed because people need to focus on what's truly the most important end result of all of this. And it's the understanding of why these things happen. It's also so that we never forget the victims like Bella, like Celeste. The unborn baby, and of course, Chris's wife, Shanann. These people matter. And the more that we compress discussing the actual truths behind why a man like Chris Watts would come unglued and commit a very crime like this. Remember, this isn't a man like many that do take their family's lives and then take their own thereafter so that they could all go together to the heavens. No, this is a man that's in the midst of cheating, lying, deceiving his family, all for a piece of tail, for a woman that he is attracted to, enticed by, and probably more sexually committed to than actually emotionally, even though it's stated about the dinners that they went on as they were dating. Yeah, got to always remember the fact that he used gift cards to pay for those until the very last one, when Shanann actually caught credit card bill of his mistake. The reason why I bring these very things up is because now he's sitting in a prison cell with his life on the line every single day for his actions. Now, prisoners do not like men like Chris Watts. We have certain names that we give them. But also, we have to look at these individuals as weak and potential snitches of what they may see happen on the penitentiary yard and they would run their mouth to get themselves some sort of deal or extra commissary or some of the nature. Well, yeah, it happens, ladies and gentlemen. There are actual inmates that give up information, just like informants on the streets for special benefits within the penitentiary. Chris Watts fits that very mold. But what he also fits to a T from the people, the criminals that I've been around, the people that have committed these 
horrifically bad cases. I've been around the serial killers. I've been around the family murderers. I've been around the people that would take the life for just the fun of it. But this man, Chris Wise, falls into a category that's very obvious to many that have been in and out of the system. They've seen him and they know what it's about. Chris Watts isn't a man of power. He's not a man capable of being strong enough, not only emotionally, but mentally to commit a crime like this on his own. He showcases his weakness by falling into the very traps that the investigators put him into in that little cold interrogation room that we've talked about before. They were able to break Chris Watts down to a crying, sobbing baby without even really any pressure. I mean, if you watch that interrogation, he knew he was going to break before it even started. But it shows you this man, Chris Watts, had no capability of planning a crime like this on his own. He would have known better than to fall trap to a lie detector test. Chris Watts, if he had the IQ of a criminal that was capable of protecting their best interests, meaning that they want to portray themselves as actually being innocent. They know lie detector tests are inadmissible to begin with. There's no point in taking one. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the results of a lie detector test, even if you passed, they will tell you you failed. There's reasons, there's techniques, there's a whole backing to this, and it showcased itself deeply in the Chris Watts interrogation. I loved it when I watched the interrogator look directly at him and even tell him he was not a good liar. And Chris Watts, in his own little chuckling way, deep inside his heart just started beating insensely right there because he knew he wasn't showcasing well even though she was giving him props for potentially acting as if he was being honest, she had given him the signal. The time was up. But what's truly sickening about this is a man that's willing to sit in an interrogation room and look at his own father to lie so incessantly about the woman that birthed your two daughters with a third child on the way, the woman that you once loved. And you were willing to point the finger at her for taking the life of two young girls, all in protection of on the side, babe, that you most likely knew in your heart you would never, ever marry. You wouldn't spend the rest of your life with Nicole because you couldn't even accomplish it with Shanann. We all learn in marriage, it's not always perfect. Arguments do happen. Sometimes volatile arguments do happen. Disagreements can lead to holes put into walls destructed doors. Hell, I've broken a few golf clubs, even when I was supposed to be out on the golf course trying to enjoy myself. The golf course couldn't calm me enough to save those golf clubs' lives because of an argument that I was reminiscing about in my mind from home. I've had to learn patience. I've had to learn that deep within myself when an argument or a disagreement or a 
difference of feelings within a marriage doesn't mean that I'm not with the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with and I love with everything I am. It just means I'm distraught, I'm out of order at the moment, and I've got a little bit of an anger issue and I need to go take a time out. But see, there's a major difference between a man like Chris Watts and I is I won't cheat my wife. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to the end of ends. Because that's what I believe in. I don't need to go find a side. I don't need someone that's more sexually enticing. If I need anything, I just look at my wife and we sit down and we discuss it we figure it out. That's what marriage is. Chris Watts not only failed his marriage, but he failed his two beautiful, running around children that loved him with everything they were. And the reason why is because Nicole pushed that. I don't care what people say whether Nicole was actually involved or in the home when the tragedy happened. Nicole, without any question, knew about Shanann, knew about the kids, knew about the marriage, and knew she was doing wrong in pulling a man into lying and deceit. She, herself, was capable of lying and deceit. It was a perfect combination. But one has to truly be the leader. One truly has to have the strength to hold out no matter what. One of them smart enough to conduct an interview in a manner that protects their self-interest. There was going to be no lie detector test for Nicole. She looked horrifically bad in her interrogation, but she was good enough to give up nothing that could tie herself to the actual crime. That's why charges have not been filed against Nicole. Now, don't get me wrong. Many truly believe she was involved, and I guarantee you the investigators have that whiff of that air as well. They're waiting for that slip-up. They're waiting for that bit of info to come that they could utilize against her. I know many people say, she's got free, she's off. She never. This is a quadruple homicide. Three living, one on the way. That's quadruple homicide. There is no statute of limitations on homicide. They can charge you any point in time in life. Now, are they going to? Probably not. It's more money. It's more effort. It's more investigation. There's a lot that's going to go into that. So all of this dancing around and finger pointing and yapping of the mouth that Chris Watts is doing isn't going to end up with much happening. But it will help him sell books that his little prison buddies out there writing on his behalf. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, just like Chris Watts doesn't have the mentality or the strength to be able to pull this crime off in his own way, neither does that kid that's writing these books. There's an in-between there that's coming up financially of these two Nimwats writing these books. But you got to really think about who was doing the planning of the Chris Watts crime, taking his wife and children's lives. Do you think Chris Watts is legitimately capable of that with every bit of breaking down emotional chaos that he's having? It's not possible. 
It's not possible. Yeah, he was lured. That fishing pole with that fishing line went into the pond and he got snagged and Nicole reeled that baby in. Chris Watts will sit in prison until the day he's no longer allowed to walk the run. The minute that man hits a yard, that somebody can get to him, and trust me, it's going to happen. He's going to learn his lessons for being weak. And now that he's pointing fingers and people are going to get the drift that he's now legitimately trying to snitch on others. That's what this is, ladies and gentlemen. He's pointing fingers now, and he's not in the environment to do so. He's in prison. Do you really want to showcase your snitching capabilities? It's not pretty. Let me finish this video off with a little personal story of a gentleman that had the same type of demeanor and emotional and mental aptitude that a Chris Watts did that I was serving time with in a penitentiary, it was a closed custody yard in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, called the Rincon Unit. They housed some of the big boys here that had been serving very long sentences, or they were stepping down out of what's called the Max Max Segregation Unit. So the next step is closed custody. This is where you actually are able to be in a cell with another person. But you also get to go to the rec yard for two hours in a horrifically hot pen with your building three times a week. And you get to go to the chow hall for one meal a day. Very limited movement. There runs with cell doors. These cell doors are all controlled by main control, they have all the buttons where they can slide the doors open and close. The shower is down at the end of the run. So your two-man cell, they'll pop your door to go to the shower and everybody else has to be locked in their cells while you go take your shower or you want to use the phone, all on the run. The only people legitimately out while you're out would be the trustees or guards. But I'll tell you what, there was a gentleman that was very much like Chris Watson. He had taken the life of his two children. They were 18 and 21 year old boys. He was an older man himself. Never fully got the story of why he did it, but I remember. He had stayed pretty quiet for about his first four or five years on the yard, not discussing the case much. All of a sudden, 48-hour mysteries came on, and it was him. They were going back over an old case, and it happened to be his. It was showcasing his first couple of years of being locked up in the penitentiary when he was making the decision to point fingers at other people that could potentially have taken the lives of his son. Even though none of them had ever been arrested, none of them had ever been charged, he himself was pointing the finger. You could hear his door slide open on the run. I was just a couple of cell doors down from him. And it was an odd time for that cell door to open. And everybody, when you're in a closed custody yard that has those slider doors where people can be in and out of their cells, you wear your headphones because your TV has no volume. You had to wear headphones to be able to hear your TV. You always left one ear out. You would wear your headphones where one ear could hear the TV and the other ear could hear 
everything happening around you. I heard that door slide open and it was one of the oddest times for that to happen. It was just before head count. Doors don't open around head count. And all of a sudden you could hear dink, 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 thud, thud, dink, dink. And you knew it was more than one person in that cell. And they were handling some business. About a month later, we were all able to come out of our cells after we had watched the investigators scour that cell for two days before even removing the body because the man's head had been slammed in the drawer of his bunk hundreds of times decapitating him where his head was in his drawer and his body was on the floor of his cell. And everybody knew the reason. You can't point fingers. You can't snitch. And guess what? Chris Watts, you're on a maximum security closed yard. They can get you. Just let them find out. They're going to get you. Mayor Hayes. It was awesome spending some more time with you. And I know this is a case that divides many on whether Nicole had a part or didn't. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Chris Watts is not a man that could have thought about this, done this. And now he can't do the time either. You have a great night. Talk to you again soon.